It is a dark and stormy night on Spooky Hill. Mm. The moon hides behind dark, foreboding clouds, and the wind whips the treetops. Somewhere deep in the ancient forest that surrounds Spooky Hill. <laughs> An animal, maybe a wolf, howls into the night and the cry is answered almost immediately by another. <coughs> the clouds momentarily part and the moonlight reveals two small fi figures emerging from the ancient forest and hurrying up the long, winding path towards the imposing building that sits on the crest of Spooky Hill. Spooky Hall is a really more of a castle than a hall with a high, dark stone walls, ornate glass windows and a huge, imposing dark oak door that looks like it could keep an army at bay. Despite numerous windows, the hall appears to be in a total darkness with not one welcoming light signaling that anyone is home. As the two children approach the entrance to Spooky Hall, they pause, look apprehensively at the huge wooden door at the and the dark, uninviting building behind it. They start to talk in a hushed, hurried tones, gesturing to the hall and the forest below be before eventually appearing to come to an agreement. They start forward once more. <laughs> Is again, Jack. I tell you, I think it is a wolf. We have to stop here and see if anyone is in. We really don't have a choice. But you know, Mary, but look at this place. Looks like a castle from every spooky TV show I have ever seen. Look, it has a moat, a drawbridge, and even gargoyles. I tell you, this place gives me the creeps. I think we should continue on the path. Maybe there's an there'll be another house or a village or something. Don't be silly, Jack. It is just an old building, and we can see for miles on this hill. There is nowhere else to go. It looks like it's going to rain any second, and don't forget the wolves. I bet there isn't anyone in any way. Look, there's no lights on. Who would sit in darkness on a night like this? We still need to try. Without our tent, we will get soaked, and who knows what other wild animals might be lurking in the forest. Or oh, monsters. What did you say? Oh, never, Mary. You aren't letting your imagination get the better of, a, of you again, are you? Just remember the trouble you caused when you were certain that... Pirates were digging for treasure at the end of the street. Dad had to spend ages on the phone apologising to the telephone company. Well, I admit I was wrong about things that time, but you don't think it's a little fishy us ending up here with that phone breaking, the signpost pointing in the wrong direction, and that giant black dog running off of our temple? You are being silly. It's just a series of unfortunate coincidences, and we are lucky to we are lucky the path led to this place at all. I suppose you might be right, but I'd rather we'd look for somewhere else all the same. Well, you can do what you like, but I am going to knock on this door and see if there is anyone here who can help you. Are you coming? Hold on, Mary, I'm coming. Come on, Mary, there's no one in. We best get back to the forest path and see if we can find another house. No. Hold on, Jack. It's opening. Yes? Oh, oh, hello. I'm sorry to bother you, but my brother and I are in a little bit of a pickle. Close your mouth, Jack. Yes? We were supposed to be camping in the forest, but the signposts all pointed in different directions. I dropped my phone in a puddle, and a big, big dog ran away with our tent pole. We were just wondering whether we could use your phone to call our men. Well, we don't have a telephone at Spooky Hall, but I suppose it would be okay if you come in for a few minutes. I think it's about to rain. Thank you, sir. Yeah, yeah, yes, thank you. Quite. Well, welcome to Spooky Hall. My name is Higgins. It is getting late. Time for me to wait, the master and mistress anyway. Please wait here and I will inform them of your arrival. Jack and Mary find themselves in a long, high, ceilinged hallway with a huge sleeping staircase that splits into two and leads off to the left and to the right. Ancient looking paintings and ta tapestries line the wall and two large suits of the armour guard the base of the stairwell. The hallway is well lit by rows of candles running the la length of the room and a giant can candle burr han hanging over the stairs. The windows are all covered in a thick black curtain that stops all the light from escaping the room and no doubt stop any daylight is just, a, just as effectively. The children watched as the huge figures of Higgins slowly ascended the staircase and disappeared through a wooden door to the left. Still so sure this was a good idea? 
You have been silly, Jack. I'm sure there's nothing to be alarmed about. Alarmed? Didn't you hear him? He's going to wake the master and mistress. It's only eight o'clock in the evening. Maybe they like to go to bed early. Or maybe they live in a spooky castle, sleep all day, and make sure the curtains keep out the sunlight. You know what I'm talking about. You have been silly, Jack. There's no such thing to alarm. <laughs> Welcome, my friends. Welcome to Spooky Hall. I am Count Von Leaf. Higgins tells me that you managed to get lost in the forest and something about a big black dog? Well, no matter. You are here now and tonight you will be an honoured addition to our dining table. We need to get out of here, now. For once I agree with you, but the door is shut tight and I don't think we could open it. What are you two whispering about? What? Oh, nothing. How did you get down here so fast? You were at the top of the stairs a second ago. Darling, you should have told me we had guests. I would have changed into something special. You look ravishing as ever, my dear. We do indeed have two young guests, although I do not know their names. Oh, sorry. My name is Mary Slater, and this is my brother, Jack. We were lost in the forest, and a big black dog stole our temple. It looks like there's going to be a tremendous storm, and we thought we would have to spend the night at the tree or something until we spotted your house. I was hoping to use your telephone to call our mum, but... Nonsense! You will stay the night in Spooky Hall as our guests. As I said, my name is Count Von Leaf, and this is my beautiful bride, the Countess Von Leaf. We don't often get visitors to Spooky Hall, so it'll certainly make a change to our usual dinner plans. Yes, welcome to our humble home. You'll stay here tonight, and Higgins can take care of you in the morning. Have you children eaten yet? I am dying for a bite myself, but we'll wait until dinner time. Higgins! Yes, my lady? Oh, good. Please show our guests to their room and prepare two extra places at the table. Very good, my lady. Oh, and Higgins, where is my little Fluffy tonight? I believe he was out in the forest earlier, but returned a while ago, and I believe that he is in the dining room now. Good, then. It is all settled. Higgins will see you to your room, and we will join you to eat in a short while. With that, Count and Countess want leaf abruptly turned and ascended the staircase. Higgins shuffled over to collect the stunned children and indicate that they should follow him through an ornate doorway at the end of the hall. Mary and Jack stand still for a second, but they realising they had little choice, turned to follow the giant butler. They passed through the door into a big room which was dominated by a large dining table, already set with four places, as if Higgins had known they had been coming all along. Below the table, the children's eye are drawn to a huge black dog that was happily chewing on a smooth wooden temple. The children turn to each other. This is going to be a very interesting night. 